Now I'm temporarily er, I'm going to put this in because I want to demonstrate something else about this motor. That is a problem. Okay, here we go. Remember I said that there's noise in the bearings? Well, how do you know? How can you tell? But if you do it, put the shaft in this way and roll this, you can actually feel in your fingertips, you can actually feel the bump, 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 bump of the bearing. Actually thumping. And I know this front bearing is bad. I'm going to try something here. I don't know how this, how this is going to work. I'm going to put this up on the camera mic. It's probably get really loud, sorry. But I'm going to try to... Let me cut this away for a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this housing against the microphone and roll it and you'll actually be able to hear the growling of the bearing. Hopefully that works. Hopefully this works. Okay, so hopefully if it didn't blow your eardrums out, you actually heard a the growling of the bearing. And this back bearing is usually pretty good. You don't usually damage them in crashes because it doesn't take the, the impact that's taken by the front of the motor. But we're going to go ahead and roll this bearing too. Okay. Now if you just roll it in your fingers, you can automatically feel this it's much smoother. You're going to hear some noise. These bearings aren't packed with grease, so you're going to hear some noise. But we'll put this up against the microphone and we'll see how that sounds. And hopefully there's an, a noticeable audio difference there. So we need to address that problem. So next will be addressing the bearing issue. Okay, now in this part of the uh, video we want to look at the bearings in this motor and we want to take them out. So these bearings will come out pretty easy most of the time and if you know you had a bad bearing you don't really have to worry about trying to salvage it. So what you want to do, what I do is I use a screwdriver, straight screwdriver of any kind that's small enough to go through the bearing assembly right there and I don't want it, of course you don't want it to come through the other side like that I want to take it at a slight angle that's why it needs to be a little bit smaller in diameter than the actual um, bearing shaft put it at a slight angle catch the edge of the bearing and I want to just tap it and rotate it around 180 degrees and just keep tapping and the bearing will come out okay and then on the back bearing of course we want to do the same thing and sometimes and like this bearing I knew would come right out the back bearings for whatever reason aren't always as tight so that leaves you with your housing completely stripped of bearings and ready to install the new bearings how do you know what bearing to get well Let's do a couple measurements and then we'll determine what bearing this thing needs and we'll go from there. Okay. You got a motor and you have a problem and you want to know, okay, what bearings do I need for this thing? How do I know? How do I determine what my bearings are? Well, if you know anything about your motor at all, you know what size motor shaft you have that's step one so you know you have a these are this motor is a four millimeter shaft so you already have one measurement and that measurement is going to be the inside diameter of the bearing this part right here this is what's called the ID okay let me try to zoom up just a hair here and hopefully this thing will focus so the inside diameter of these bearings is four millimeters. Now the next thing you're going to need to know is the outside diameter of the bearing. So you need to, you have to measure it. And for me, I have at home here this this pair of calipers. Now these things only measure in American sizes. Most of these bearings are metric. So we need to take our measurements and we'll have to make conversions, which is easy to do with Google. And this bearing measures 0.4 and we're up to 7. And I got to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
two, like two and a half. So, like point four seven five, point point four seven two five is what it looks like. So put that down here. Point four seven two five of an inch. Well, you have to have that measurement because that's your that's your outer diameter. That's the outside diameter that fits into the housing of the motor right here. The other measurement you're going to need is how thick this bearing is. Now I guess technically you could use your caliper and do a plunge depth and measurement and see what it takes. We could actually plunge this down and onto the flat part there and that gives us a measurement of 15567 okay 0.157 I will write I'm gonna write that down 0.157 but I'm gonna go ahead and measure this bearing and see what he measures okay 1585 okay so a little leniency here as far as accuracy goes so Okay, point one five eight. Right, I'm gonna measure it five six seven. No, seven five. It is seven. Okay, it just come out seven five. Seven five. Sorry, when you're old and we're bifocals, things are tough. Okay, so that could give me an extra an, another measurement. So now I have my inside diameter. I have my outside diameter, and now I have my width of my bearing. This is point one five seven five. Now, like I said, it does me no good at all because they're metric. So I had to convert these to metric readings. So I have a feeling that we're going to find out that width is four millimeter. So why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and take an inside measurement. We get here. Hey, look at that. One five, one five seven five. So that's four millimeter. Okay. So I know that that one is another four millimeter measurement. So now I have two of my measurements. All I got to do is get my outside diameter measurement. This one was point four seven two five. And this one would be er, ah, come on, point three five four, point three five four. A point three five four. Okay. So. No, that won't work. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on the computer real quick and run this through the Google measurements and see what it comes up with. Okay, so getting on the computer there, on the Googler, um, we find that the 0.4725 measurement uh, calculates to 0.11998 millimeter or 12 millimeter and 0.354 inch is 0.899 millimeter so it's 9 millimeter so what you'll be looking for is a set of bearings that are 4, 12 and 4 and 4, 9 and 4 4 millimeter shaft, 12 millimeter outside diameter 4 millimeter inside diameter and that's what you would do, that's how you'd measure your bearings so you have to have your ID for the shaft, the OD of the bearing, and the width. I think I said width. I don't know. So your width of the bearing. So those are the three measurements you need to accomplish getting the bearings for your motor. Okay. And that being said, I have my new bearings. There they are. Now I source my bearings uh, right now from Heads Up RC because that's where this motor came from. 
so it's the easiest easiest place I find to, to get bearings most of the time they have the best listings I mean you can find them on Hobby King and other places but you gotta do some pretty hard searching but I find that uh, Heads Up RC has really got a nice layout for bearings okay so now we're ready to put the bearings in this motor we determined what size they were I've got my replacements ready and we're going to go ahead and get these installed now uh, they can be rather tight to put in so you want to be very careful especially here because you don't want to bang into any of your wiring smush anything and destroy your motor so again I prefer to use the quarter inch socket set because you can pick until you get one that fits pretty well on the bearing the more on the outer surface you can get with the socket the better you don't really want to bang in the middle too much because that will put stress on the bearings so you want to be as careful as possible in your uh, selection of your socket size to get close and just be a real light couple taps the bearing in place and I don't like the way it fits so I'm going to do this one and very gently we're going to put this bearing in it's hard to see with my hand in the way I realize but I got to be accurate here tell when you're down all the way you, it gets a very solid sound to it when I was first hitting you you couldn't hear anything kind of, it was kind of a lighter tap but now I'm down to get a solid whack okay so that bearings in place I want to do the same thing on this side now here we gotta be careful we can't set this down on this face and hammer because we'll flatten these wires and we'll destroy the motor we don't want to do that so if you have to put something in the center here to stand it off socket will work if you have to. It fits around the bearing, fits on there, it's fine. Um, I'm hoping I can just push this one in by hand because sometimes these are a little bit more loose on the back side. Yep, look at that. I pushed it right in with my hand. And that's fantastic. Okay. So there, the motors together and ready to put the, the bell on and get the shaft in there and we're ready to roll. Okay, well that concludes the second portion of our brushless motor rebuild. Now we're going to move on to the final assembly, putting the motor shaft in and getting everything fit up on it. So stay tuned. <laughs>